Have you ever been frustrated at the lack of realism in The Sims? Maybe you find yourself desperately searching for different mods and CC in hopes to make it realistic. Well, don't worry, I've got you. I'm a big fan of playing realistically and I have multiple videos on it. I love playing realistically and when I say that, I don't mean getting the most realistic looking CC like Alpha, but I mean creating and structuring the game to make it feel more like real life. I might be a little bit obsessive about doing this and I might take The Sims a little seriously, but without further ado, let's get into it. So my number one tip would be to create or use a realistic save file. There are tons of save files out there that are based on realism, but if none match your style or you're feeling extra fun, create your own. This is great because it can be perfect to what style you want and it can also just use packs you have so you don't have to desperately search for save files that only have packs you have. If you want to create your own save file, make sure to get my save file template planner to help with the process. And while you're doing that, why don't you binge watch my realistic save file series in the background? My second tip is to utilize CAS. This can come in many forms, and if Alpha CC is your thing, use that, because of course that will make it look more realistic, but personally, I don't like that style at all. Other things you can do is get the CC eyelashes to make them more realistic, and also I recommend making your sims not look as perfect as they do in the game by using pre-made sims that come up and then don't stray from them so if the pre-made sim has like outward ears keep that in your sim you could even use pinterest to look at real people try searching photography portraits face portraits stuff like that see real life people and understand how actual anatomy works i also recommend using things like birthmarks freckles acne to really give that realistic feel another great tip is using the same items for multiple outfits how many shoes do you have my guess would be three to five probably each having a different person Purpose. You might have high heels for fancy nights, sneakers for exercising, stuff like that. And you would only really have one of each unless you're really rich or really love shoes. So for example, give your sim one pair of sneakers and make that in their everyday, their athletic, the hot weather, etc, etc. You could do the same with accessories, outfits, hairstyles, and everything else. And if you were like super serious about realism, you can even keep track of how your sim's hair is. Is their natural hair curly, wavy, straight, what is it? And then you can figure out how it would look while you're sleeping, how it would look in swimwear, how it would look when it's really hot, and that way you're not having one bob in everyday wear, and then for some reason during party their hair's really long, unless you say that it's because they have extensions in. Then when you pick different different hairstyles for different outfits. It doesn't look super out of place. I also like when my sim has swimwear, for example, I try and think about what their hair would look. My hair is pretty straight, kind of wavy, and when I swim, it just goes dead straight. Whereas if you're curly, maybe it might go a little bit frizzy if you don't take care of it after swimming, etc. So try and think about how your sim's hair would react to the water or how it would even react to sleeping. I recommend if your sim has really curly hair or like a certain type of texture to put your sim in a bonnet because that is realistic and also protects their hair. And lastly for Cass, make sure to add some extra storytelling elements. So for example, if your sim is an artist, maybe they do their own nails just so you could pick one of the nails that have like nice cool artwork on them. Or maybe they have a necklace that they never take off because their mum gave it to them or their grandma, or maybe they have like a friendship bracelet they're always wearing. Stuff like that could be really cool. Next, I wanted to talk about packs I recommend because there are a few packs that really add a lot of realism. First off, I recommend Seasons. This of course adds holidays, but it also adds seasons and weather, hence the name. And obviously this is a major part of life and something we just generally experience. So I really recommend having that pack. Cats and Dogs is another great one for realism since most people have an animal in their life and a lot of people have animals right now. If your realistic gameplay tends to follow a lot of family gameplay as well. I recommend high school years despite being a little bit glitchy. It does have a lot for realism. I also recommend growing together or parenthood for gameplay if it's family orientated. Also laundry day is another great one for realism because of course it adds laundry. Not that anyone wants to do laundry but it's realistic. I also have a full Ultimate Sims 4 pack review so if you're curious on specific packs you should get or just want to know more about what I'm talking about go and watch that video. Rotational gameplay is also a great way to deal with realism. While it's just a great way to play in general in my opinion it also really does make great realistic gameplay it basically like builds the connections of households so rather than your little family just being realistic and no one else being they're just off with the fairies you can have a kind of connection where everyone has realistic lives and then it just overall feels like a more realistic world I find. If you're interested in playing this way, I highly recommend getting my rotational planner template. I'll link it down below. This not only helps really plan out and flesh out your rotational gameplay, it also just really helps with realistic gameplay because my Sims little template has so much extra detail for you to flesh out your Sims and make them super realistic. So make sure to get this and my save file template in the links below. Now, I don't personally play with the cults, but I got this comment on one of my videos where I was making 
making an Instagram reel basically talking about how to play realistically and they commented saying they love playing with occults but to keep it realistic they kind of imagine how the occults would interact in the world. So for example with this you could say that vampires are known but cast out or you could say that occults are not generally known and most people think they are just fairy tales and lore like folklore and the set few people go you know maybe ghost hunters maybe paranormal in investigators stuff like that know about them or believe in them but no one else really does and you generally just keep them to their own world I think this is a good way to play if you want occults because it keeps it realistic while adding a bit of a fun element bit more mystical element but still works perfectly for realism now I have a few things to recommend when it comes to building so let's get into that but for more detail I do have a full video on how to build realistically so I'll link that as well so you can watch that one in full detail if you need some more advice. So first off, when creating a house, I really, really, really recommend knowing who's living there because of course that will help make the house more realistic. So if you have three teenage boys living there, it's gonna be a little bit messy and there's probably gonna be laundry everywhere, maybe some gross food left out. You know how teenage boys are. But if you have a parent, maybe like a mom who's super, super obsessed with cleaning, the house is probably going to be pretty nice, pretty organized. Maybe the dad loves gardening or the mom loves gardening, so the garden looks really nice. If you can think about who would live there, it can really help you make a nice house that has crazy amounts of storytelling and detail. I also recommend adding cars and garages to lots. Another thing you should most definitely do is when building lots, if they're really big, add multiple houses. So for example, in my safe file, I have a neighborhood in Willow Creek and all of them, there's like pretty small houses, a medium sized house. And then there's a big lot and that lot I figured I didn't want to add one big house to it because it would look really out of place and the neighborhood would look smaller. So what I did is I made three houses on that lot which made the neighborhood look bigger, more cozy and more tight knit and I just overall really liked it. And this even works better now with full rent, makes it super functional and you don't just have to have a collection of sims in one household, you can actually make them different households. <laughs> the commercial lots you could do malls, strip malls, just a collection of commercial lots even. While these don't all work at once technically there are ways around this such as just hiring bartenders, hiring baristas, hiring whatever. But the main way I recommend doing this is say you build a strip of community lots. One's a cafe, one's a restaurant, one's a bar. Each time you sew, if you're going to go renovate the cafe, switch the lot type to cafe. Make sure all the requirements are ticked off and then do the same for bar and restaurant. Then when it's done, all three lot types should have all their requirements met. And then one night you might decide you want your sim to go on a date night to a bar. Simply switch that commercial lot to a bar lot type and now it'll function as a bar. This is perfect with the lack of lots in some worlds. It makes it feel more lively in worlds despite the lack of lots. And I just overall think it gives a more realistic feel because you rarely find just one stray community community lot there is usually quite a few. And lastly for community lots, commercial lots, I really recommend adding parking lots, security cameras, staff rooms, receptions, especially for pools, gyms, indoor playgrounds, whatnot. It just adds so much realism. I always just like to think when I'm building, what would this lot have if I visited in real life? If you visit a pool in real life, you're probably going to have to go through reception to pay. You don't really get free pools. Same with gyms, same with indoor playgrounds. There's usually car parks outside as well, and there's usually security cameras for the business's protection. And then lastly, I wanted to recommend a few realistic mods for you guys to really add that extra element that you can't just get normally. MC Command Center is a great one. I really, really recommend this. Even if you don't necessarily play realistically, it's just a great mod to have. This will help set up your gameplay super easily because when you obviously create Sims, they come with no skills, no relationships, no career, all of this stuff and then it doesn't feel very realistic because it feels like they just were born into this world. They just spawned in, which they did. But we don't want it to feel like that, do we? We want them to feel like they have a life. If a mom has three children, she's going to have the parenting skill. That's just how that works. If she's at level 10 in her career, she's going to have some skills with that. So we use MC Command Center to promote them to where it feels acceptable. We use it to create skills where it feels acceptable and create relationships because nobody has no relationships. So... We do all of that using MC Command Center and it just works so perfectly. Base Mental Drugs is also a great one. Please keep in mind, this isn't really for kids. This is just great because you have the extra realism of drugs or alcohol, getting tipsy, getting drunk, etc. Things that just happen in real life. Wonderful Whims is also a great one because this adds different like woohoo, romance, attraction levels. This is not necessarily unsafe for kids. It just adds extra realism like 
periods, I believe, and pregnancy scares, stuff like that. It's just, it seems good. Wonderful Whims is also the safe for work version of Wicked Whims. So if you're an adult and want a not safe for, for work version, Wicked Whims is right there. Please keep in mind your sims will actually be naked. And there's a lot of crazy animations with it. So if you're a you know, young teenager or something, maybe just steer clear of this mod. Lice of Life is also a good one. It just adds more things to do and buffs out the game more. And then lastly, the SNB Banking mod is great. It adds more elements of finances, credit cards. You can split up finances and households better. Just overall a great mod for realism. And I will link all of these mods down below for easy access. Anyways, I love being organized and creating the perfect Sims game full of realism. So I hope you guys do as well. And I hope hope this video was valuable or maybe you just enjoyed watching it. You know, me just yapping about realistic gameplay because I truly love it and that's kind of all my channel's about. If you liked this, make sure to go look at my playlist where I talk about how to play The Sims realistically in great detail. Click it there. Go to watch that next. Bye!